We're approaching the warmer season. It's time for your favorite season, Jay. Oh, uh, God. We're Get back. that f***ing back. back. And they have iced teas now. White Claws are an affront against God They have mankind. iced teas. This is a lovely White Claw peach iced tea. Iced tea White yep. Claw? It sounds fucking awful. Just get a, any of the million iced tea alcoholic beverages. That's what I chose for the last D and D session that we ran a couple weeks ago because we always stopped at the liquor store first. I bought a big ass tall boy of a fucking uh, twisted tea. <laughs> okay. DM drink for the night along with shots of absinthe. Yeah, we might have, or might not have called you out once or twice on the last episode when we got random messages about absinthe. <laughs> That may have happened. It may have uh, been pointed out. So call me out all you want. Absinthe is uh, the superior spirit. If you're a if you're a parent, <laughs> remember this audience. If you're a parent listening to this, if you've had a long day with the kid, long week at work, all that. Friday night, drink some absinthe. It'll be it'll be it'll be better. We can't. Hello and welcome to Star Wars Every Week Forever, the podcast in which we watch one Star Wars movie every week forever. This week, The Force Awakens. Yes. Chris, finish up that sushi and then tell me how your watch was. It was alright. Don't talk with a full mouth. We do a podcast. All they have is an audio format. Hey, look, they don't look, need to hear that. We're down to Ben this week, so I gotta be Ben, alright? We need the Ben energy. And the Ben energy is apparently talking with a mouth full. Yeah, we need that Ben energy. I'm gonna sit here and talk about my mouth being full and, you know, my, well, my watch was okay. It would have been better with a pod race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, buddy. Miss you. <laughs> Love you, Ben. Ben is sick right now, so um, they're off for the week. Uh, so it's just me and Chris. And if it's anything like the last episode, we'll just have like a weird interview format for 45 minutes to an hour. Jay, how was your watch? <laughs> uh, it was a watch. Oh. It was just the watch that it was. I don't know. It's... It's hard going from the the original trilogy to the sequel trilogy because the length bumps up considerably. Mm. So it feels a little exhausting pretty much every time. Um, so it was long, and that's the best and worst thing I can say about it. Last Jedi is and always will be worse in that respect. But oh, yeah, I, I actually had an interesting thought this week um i uh, I, uh, i'm probably selling it a little too hard it's not so much an interesting thought it is and you just reminded me um it is very weird that this franchise unless there's something i'm not thinking of is the only franchise where if you watch it in chronological order you get you know nice special effects you know kind of you know, for for 2023, not the best special effects, but, like, you know, looks visually, whatever, you know. And then the original trilogy, you get these, you know, practical effects. The movies still look great, but definitely a, a dip as far as effects go. And then you move into the sequel trilogy where it's just fucking all goddamn special effects and ridiculous and over the top. And it is a weird... Yeah. It's weird with the way it's laid out now, you know, if you watch them in number order. Um, but it, it also weirdly... Each of these movies, various visual effects, feel pretty perfect for, like, the story of where the galaxy's at at that point. Yeah. Like, it, it works yeah. weirdly. I, don't, I still think that, oh, this is gonna be... So, one of the things I hate most that Star Wars fans that don't like the prequels always talk about... Because I've been very vocal. I hate Phantom Menace and Tiger Clones. I just really, really do. Um, but one of the things that annoys me most is when Star Wars fans are like, yeah, I don't like that the prequel trilogy is just too clean. The universe is too clean. The thing I loved about 
the original trilogy is that you could get tetanus on any surface. And it's like, I don't... That's an aesthetic choice based on where yeah, well, the world it is. And I think that's the dumbest thing to fucking point that's out. That's always been... It's so dumb. That's always been really... It, I mean, it, it truly is just the best way to realize somebody has just missed the point entirely, you know? <laughs> because... Right. And it's something George was aware of. Yeah. That's why the Nabu Starfighter is, like, so fucking clean. Yeah. Like, he leans into it and you get well, there. Well, that's a... Um, I just think it's a dumb complaint. Oh, it's absolutely but... a dumb complaint. It just, it doesn't understand the whole point of it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because that's 100% what they were going for. I do often find there are points in the sequel trilogy where it's a little too clean. Yeah, well, and that's that's kind of what I was going to say. It's moving into the sequel trilogy, it's kind of interesting because it is it's weighed a little heavily in the OT, but like it is kind of a blend of the two aesthetics almost. Yeah. Uh it, it definitely leans more in the direction of the original trilogy. Nothing's quite that clean there are some there are some things for sure where it's like yeah it's, it's a little too clean but one of the ones that bothers me a little bit is the falcon gets clean really really quickly yeah. like it looks a little yeah. dirty and then by the time it's in space yeah. it's clean which maybe that's realistic i don't know we'd have to consult An a, a, a scientist to say, you know, what would happen to dirt pot particles in space or whatever. But um, I do fi sometimes find that they fall into this pit where only on desert planets does it seem as dirty as it probably should in a galaxy that's now been in, been under fascist rule for the majority of 50 years with about a five or six or seven or eight year difference. Um, but I also think that's a really dumb comment as well you know the kind of dumb comment that you would make 15 rotations into yeah. a dumb star yeah. wars podcast where you watch the movies ever. Well, that's, uh... it, it's my version of screws and bricks yeah. right yeah. <laughs> but i have an excuse because i'm tired see and i'm sick of this shit. i i want more content in the gap after return of the jedi and the force awakens yeah. like we have mandalorian and there's a lot of cool stuff that has come out because of Mandalorian being set in that time period. And I mean, honestly, spoilers for the first episode of The Mandalorian Season 3 that just aired um, this past week, which really snuck up on Six me. Six weeks in the past. Really snuck up on me. Um, ben still hasn't even watched the trailer. We had a whole conversation last week about it. He's like, I, I haven't really consumed any content. Oh, I was so excited. I watched that fucking episode the day it came out. I was so excited. When I remembered it was coming out, because again, it snuck up on me. Um, but no, I mean, there was a, uh, there was a cool, oh, maybe cool to, cool to me and Jay specifically, but I could see some hardcore Star Wars fans being annoyed about this, but I appreciate what they've done with, like, the New Republic, and I, I think Jay does to a degree, too. Uh, Grief Karga makes a, uh, comment to Din Djarin at one point, you know, because he's opened up this independent trading outpost on Navarro, um, and Din essentially asks, like, well, why don't you, you know, you're dealing with pirates, why don't you bring, you know, request a, a marshal from the New Republic, and he uh, basically just tells Din, like, look, we spent so long under the thumb of one empire you know i'm not i'm not gonna go immediately join up with a new one you know he's like we're gonna be a fully independent yeah, yeah, yeah. uh you know trade outpost fully independent of any uh you know government or any of that I'm just, I, I like that i like a lot of what i've seen with the new republic it's very different than the eu i think we've talked about it plenty we don't like what they've done with leia specifically but for the the way Leia in current canon yeah, where you know she's basically a disgraced politician because it came out that vader was her father which again i don't it's not that i don't I, I don't love it just based on eu stuff but like for this version of the new republic they're going for it right. works very well for for an updated world set i think it makes 
So, a lot of time has passed between 1980... When did Return of the Jedi come out? 83? Mm. A lot of time has passed since, you know, the late 80s, the early 90s, mid-90s, when they were writing New Republic content, and 2015, when Force Awakens came out. And I think... I don't hate it. I don't actually dislike it at all. I think Leia, disgraced politician, because she kept the Vader thing to herself, makes all the sense in the world. Um, is it my favorite thing? No, but I, I, it doesn't bother me. It's, it's the one way that they've damaged Leia for me. If I, if I'm ignoring space, Leia, um, where that fucking <laughs> spoiler for next week's episode, I got unreasonably angry about that. Again. We, uh, in the, in the EU, in the original like, New Republic stuff, Leia owned that shit, you know? Like, it wasn't, it wasn't so much, like, she hid it, she didn't want to talk about it, obviously, but it was, like, if... It was pretty out Yeah, open, if yeah. this situation was brought up, EU Leia would have been like, yeah, he was, so fucking what? What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> like, you know? Like, she, having... She was very honest yeah, about it. Yeah, having Leia, like, kind of hiding it, and then that coming out, and being a whole big scandal just feels wrong to the characterization of Leia, which is I don't know, it's just another example of uh, them fucking these characters up for me, because I, I they destroyed Luke's characterization they completely fucking destroyed Luke I might be the only person on this podcast still with that opinion, but I I don't know, it's cool I, I understand what you mean I, um I mean, I never associated with Luke. I never really had a vested interest in Luke. Luke was a character that was, like... I think the most interesting Luke that they did... Because here's the thing. They kind of did the same thing with Luke in the EU that they did with the sequel trilogy. It's just that they did it in a different context. There was... In a series of books that, again, this is a thing that you and I don't agree on in a series of books I don't particularly like. So compared to that, I actually. Like but no, I mean, more. look. Here, um, here's my, here's my issue with that because of those books. If I'm remembering correctly, mm -hmm. when that series that I love that I can't remember the name of because I've put the EU into a memory Legacy hole of with a lot of childhood memories yeah. that I just I don't look at. I've, <laughs> um, but uh, Legacy of the Force. Yeah. Fucking Jason Solo killed. Luke Skywalker's wife. And yes. Luke still and then did. Luke Skywalker killed. Mm -hmm. Who'd Luke kill? Luke Skywalker murdered Luminara. Like, straight up murder. Yes. Like, he had a choice do it or don't do it, and he murdered yes. her. It's different than his blood, because when it came time to it, he still couldn't or wouldn't kill Jason. My favorite part about this conversation is that it has a lot to do with what Ben and I talked about last week. That's hilarious. I have not heard that yet. Uh, when one of us isn't here, meaning when uh, Ben or Chris isn't here, they don't hear it until the episode goes up. I always hear it because I'm the editor. Uh, but we talked a lot about uh, content last week. We talked a little bit about, I, on a previous point, about the New Republic in the EU. It was kind of jackboot, like... In the EU, the New Republic was a little, like, jackboot oh, yeah. standing army. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a little, like, e even past when the Empire was obviously defeated, it was it was yeah. very militarized. Yeah. It was, I, I said last week that, because um, we talked a little bit about what it must be like to be a politician in Star Wars when dealing with the fucking Jedi. Because yeah. the, the basis of last week's episode was, let's talk about Jedi and Sith Crusades. That's that's the subject that we oh, got God. on. But something I touched on last week is I think the sinew, like the the thing that keeps the Star Wars universe together, is not talking about the democratic system, <laughs> like the the specific like like yeah. getting down to the nitty gritty of how a democratic system yep. works in Star yep. Wars. I think once you start to poke at that. All of the all of the muscle breaks well, and the uh, whole universe falls apart, and that was very much the New Republic in the EU. You can't. It's hard to do that kind of nuance in 
big budget blockbuster fucking movies because in one of the EU books there was decent political intrigue side plots. Yes, but that's not what I mean. No, no, what I mean, I, I, mean you're, is... I know what you mean. The New Republic was very militarized, like hyper militarized, ready yeah. to fucking go at any time. Which, uh, it's easy to, uh, it's easy to, I guess, see this opinion um from something fictional and understand it in a way that i wouldn't with uh certain real world governments i could make this parallel to i almost as a kid reading these books i i understood that i think to a degree because it's like yeah man they just came out of one of the worst fucking periods of like governance so it's like yeah no they're and you've got people trying to fucking like you know, use severed hands to, to, to weird, you know, you got crazy shit going on. So it's like, yeah, they're jumping at shadows. It's like, what's going to fucking pop up next? You know, like, yeah. And I think uh, to your point, they do the exact opposite thing after the Yuzhan Vong war, where they try mm -hmm. to go exactly in the opposite direction and to establish a normal democracy. And it falls the fuck apart. Which I think is less because um, they should they should have followed Admiral Akbar and Mon Mothma's let's stay night <laughs> Jack Boot um, less fashy, um, but I think it's more because of the thing that we talked about last week, which is the Jedi and Sith do Crusades, and it's impossible to work. See, around. look, I don't, oh, man. I might. This is this is hilarious, by the way. Can we also talk about how when there's only two of us here, we actually have serious episodes where we talk about content and not just fuck around? <laughs> this is... <laughs> the reason why this is happening is because we had two episodes that were so wildly out there, worse than we've ever been, that we all kind of went, okay, we need to tighten up the script. That's right, I'm just as high right now as I was on that one horrible episode. <laughs> I'm just fucking focused, you know? Uh... <laughs> I might be talking myself into liking the sequel trilogy right now based upon this conversation and this conversation alone. Mm -hmm. We're meeting a little bit, yeah. Look, I, one of my favorite... It's, it's not a genre, but one of my favorite types of stories is truly, like, multiverse-type stuff. Like, and I think that comes from reading comic books where fucking every five years someone's coming out of a fucking portal and there's some new version of the world and um shout out to the exiles yeah. and they're bringing back ultimate marvel for some reason yeah god listen listen here's hey Can I take did, one Jay, did you vote in the x-men corner? corner did you did you vote in the x-men oh yeah if it's just two of us no it's rigged corner, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no the x-men vote is i don't i don't trust it um um, the Hellfire Gala, however, I am always a little involved with. Hellfire Gala's pretty Anyway, cool. um, so if you're bringing back 1610 Marvel to do, like, an event, here's what you do. Bring back the Spider-Man characters. Bring back Kitty Pride, Logan's son, who I can't remember the name of. It's not, not um... Not Dick, and he has a different son in that. Bring back what was left of the X-Men after all the bullshit happened, and then call it a day. You don't need Jackknife, Fascist Captain America, like you're putting on the covers. You don't, you don't need... Nobody wants to see that character. I'll say right now, I literally just talked about my dad to my dad about this. It is, in my opinion, the most true representation of what a Captain America should be. Right. Like, he's a horrible fucking character, and it is sad, because Captain America is a symbol, you know? You, you, it's, it is a good thing. You know, the original impetus of the right. character was a great symbol. But if you're going to do a modern story of what a Captain America would be, introducing him in the first issue and having him shaking hands with George W. Bush is one of the greatest things that's ever happened in comic books. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. It's very true. It's my favorite version of Captain America, just because I'm a cynical fucking dick. It is the best version of Captain America. <laughs> also, the panel of him climbing a building to jump out of a window and punch Giant Man in the face is still one of my favorite comic book panels. <laughs> 
let me be clear. Um, <sighs> it, it's not that that's the best version of Steve Rogers. No, I think Steve no, Rogers certainly supersedes not. Yeah. The Cap- it's the idea of a character like Captain America, that that's the version that would exist. Yeah. Yes, I 1,000% yeah. agree. If you're going to do the 1610 thing, take yeah. a piece of advice. Don't make it a big fight thing. Don't make it Avengers versus Ultimates. You're already leaning that way. Just throw it out. Throw it in the trash. Nobody's going to care. Nobody liked those characters. Those that they did, you ruined. Throw it in the trash. Don't revisit it. Put it to the side. Here's what you do. Take the X-Men characters. Send them to um, Krakoa. Have them look at Krakoa. Play off how they would react to Krakoa based on what they know from their universe. Send the Spider-Man characters and do a series of one-shots with Gwen Stacy, with Peter Parker, and a series, and like MJ meeting MJ. Um, Do 1610 Peter Parker, having to live with the bad decisions that 1610 Peter Parker made. And I would even say maybe make him an antagonist that's not a villain. Because uh, 1610 Peter Parker were kind of left off on a pretty fucked up spot, if you really think about it. 1610 um, Peter Parker is dead, isn't he? Or did they bring him back? No, they brought they brought him oh, no. back. Okay. Oh no! They I I, wa- I would like to say, the end, and I... he had been in hiding. He had been in hiding, and he told nobody. He told nobody. Now I might be misremembering. I tuned they out him of the again. comics for a very long time. I got interested in the 1610 comics at the very end because Brian Michael Bendis, who I have a complicated relationship Love with, tried to comics. scrounge some usefulness out of it, and it kind of worked for a little bit, even though I, while it was all happening, I was like, just shut it down. Oh, I mean, the honestly, the best thing that comes out of the Ultimate stuff for me is, is Mark Bagley's art on Ultimate Spider-Man. Fucking Bagley. Yeah. Great. For yeah. sure. And then do a Miles Morales series where... He does for Jessica Drew 1610 what 1610 Jessica Drew did for him. And that's all you do. Not a big event comic, just a series of Spider-Man and X-Men comics, and that's it. But they, also... It's done. It's done. You did fantastic work. But also, based on what we were just talking about, I would like to watch Steve Rogers on 616 beat the shit out of 610 <laughs> Steve Rogers. Well, yeah, that's... I would like it very much if they just took 1610 Steve Rogers and made him a villain in the 616 verse. Mm-hmm. Um, in the same way that they need to turn Hank McCoy 616 into uh, Age of Apocalypse Dark Beast because uh, this is a fucking war criminal with monster. Do you know that um, current uh, Hank McCoy in the comics keeps Wolverine de- feralized as a pet? That's a thing that he did to his former best friend. He is a feral pet that has no mind. That's what he did to him. Gross. That's Hank McCoy. Gross. Hey, look, the X-Men in general just suck right now. This whole Krakoa thing has gone way too far. I don't know. Here's the thing. It, it's... I like it. But I personally have never... I've always kind of bounced off the idea of inner conflict is essential to the X-Men, but I don't think it's necessarily enough to... So what Krakoa is now is an, an exploration into... It's just complicated, because it's very good that they moved to Krakoa, but all of these books now revolve around inner conflict within well, mutant kind and all of these like political machinations and these deeply yeah. complex... And it's just... I, it's colored a lot of opinions of characters that I don't like. It, it, it was the right direction to go, but I think it's overstayed its welcome. I mean, personally. my biggest issue is, yes, there's a lot of inner conflicts, but it's boring political conflicts. All of their villains are fucking X-Men. You got fucking Apocalypse just hanging out. Nobody can die. Counterpoint. Nobody can die anymore. Nope. Apocalypse is different. They're fucking okay, clones. Apocalypse is different. Because they did the wonderful Apocalypse story where Apocalypse was raised anew. That it, Apocalypse is slightly different. That's a different thing. I can't. Now, Sinistro is one that wigs me out. But no, I'm fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with that aspect. Um, and I'm also fine with they kind of use that idea to turn some long-standing X-Men characters into 
villains that probably should have been villains for a long time. <laughs> Hank McCoy. Um, and then it allows you to focus on, like, one of the best things to come out of these Krakoa arcs is Mystique and Destiny, which are basically, like, the number one and number two interests in Krakoa now, to me. Uh, but it's more a problem with all of it has kind of shelled up and focused on these political machinations and inner conflicts with the, the council and how they interact with each other and how the outskirts of that interacts with that. And it's just conflict within the X-Men is what drives that series, but it's not usually so politically heavy internally. <laughs> and that I, I've kind of lost some interest. You know what's really that. funny? Um, I'm sure. I don't know if anyone's made this point. I promise this is not a thing I read anywhere. I'm going to make this point independently from my own high brain right now. And if someone else already said this, you've made a very funny joke, at least I think, because I think this is very funny. The thing just popped in my head. You know how when uh, Marvel started using Gin Humans a while back? Um, because they still didn't have the movie rights to the X-Men, and so they were like, fuck it, we'll make a bunch of new Inhumans, and they're just gonna be mutants, and nobody's gotta know, it's fine, they're gonna be mutants. Well, they're, they're done with that, so much so to the point that these new Inhumans characters they've created in the MCU are actually mutants. But what they've done with the X-Men with Krakoa, they've basically turned the X-Men into the Inhumans. They're fucking living alone yep. on a goddamn island. They've got all this political fucking drama and intrigue going on. I think one day Marvel is going to announce an X-Men movie and that trailer is going to drop and it's going to be Krakoa. And all of a sudden a decision that was originally brilliant is going to become wildly apparent why it was made. But I don't want to shit on Krakoa too much, because there's a lot of good stuff going on. It's just that it's overstated its welcome, and I feel like it was more interesting when it was dealing outwardly more than it was. But all of this was a point, because you had said you love multiverse yeah, runs, yeah. and we kind of got out Sorry. of hand. Um, um, and the reason why I went back to last week's episode was because I did talk a little shit about JC in last week without you here. <laughs> How dare you. Um, I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, with. I think I'm talking myself into liking this fucking trilogy. Because, like, ser much, like, some of my favorite stories are ones that handle multiverse stuff well, especially of well established worlds, I guess. And I hate that I'm literally explaining how I'm a hypocrite right now. Um, <laughs> it's hard to look back at the EU stuff sometimes and then watch this new content and not be upset still. Mostly by certain character class, like the way they portray certain characters and the personalities they're in. Luke is the one that always bothers me. Luke is not a character that I ever personally really felt a pull towards or a connection to or anything but it i don't know to me it almost feels like you're ruining star wars as an idea what, like anakin is not space jesus to me luke skywalker is space jesus to me when you corrupt the incorruptible like he I like the gray characters in Star Wars. I don't want Luke Skywalker to ever be that gray character. He needs to be my paragon of, like, what is good, you know? If we don't have Luke, who is the most purely objectively good character in the Star Wars mythology? Ahsoka? Yeah, and Ahsoka's See? still considered a fucking gray Jedi, you know? Like, what, <laughs> what do we got? There needs to be one thing that can be aspired to. Like, one person that's fucking just good. I agree with you, and this is actually a common... I agree with you on principle, because this is a common thing I bring up in friend groups when it comes to, like, Game of Thrones, or, like, yeah. a lot of these um, shows where it's, like, every... there's not really someone to follow or like or hope 
a root Sam. for where it's kind of like, they're all real shit. Game what? of Thrones, Sam. Sam was just a sweet boy who wanted to save the world. And he did. <laughs> Spoilers for Game of Thrones. We love Sam. <laughs> How far in does this character appear? First season? I gotta say first season. Really? I don't remember Hold them. On, I'm saying, I don't remember them. I'm very high. I it's very I possible I'm uh, saying the wrong name right now. Uh, well, I mean, I don't. I only ever watched the first season, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, same well, Tarly. And I've to, I've told, I've told my Oedipus Game of Thrones story, where I read Oedipus and then I read Game of Thrones, and I was so disgusted with Oedipus that I started reading Game of Thrones, and I was like, hey, cleansing fantasy story, and then it was like, no, no, no. First, second chapter, um. Siblings doing the badonga dong. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, had a point. Oh, um, on principle, I agree with you, but again, I, I feel the need to point out that they did that with Luke in the EU too. Like he changed the entire way the Jedi Order works to go kind of gray Jedi. Now, granted, he realized that it's a mistake later on because of Jason. Well, and even then, because like, yeah, he went a little. Gray Jedi with it, I guess, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't in the I'm gonna go sequester myself on an island. Nothing matters. Let them have it. You know, like he's the rebellion hero. You know, like him and Leia and Han. Like fucking, you got Han Solo out here doing more for the fucking resistance than you do Luke at this point in continuity. Like what the fuck? I don't know. It um. It's, it's just a disconnect. That one doesn't bother me very much. It's just... God, Luke is so fucking boring. <laughs> it's like, I'm just, I don't well, know. And it, it's gotten to a point where, like, now, watching Mandalorian and then Book of Boba Fett when Luke showed up, it's like, you look at that, it just makes me sad. Because it's like, he's like... You see him fucking running through the woods with Grogu, and he's building a temple, and he's talking to Ahsoka, and I'm like, fuck, man, what happened? <laughs> this sucks. Like, this is... You look at that, it's They'll like, God, this is it. EU Luke, man. This is fucking Luke building the temple and optimistic and excited about, like, training a new Jedi Order. And then I get Mark I... Hamill with a beard and <laughs> long hair. He's just mad. But Hey, hot take, but uh, Luke should have had a beard in the EU. He, he, look, he looks good with a beard. I'm just, like, I don't permit <laughs> Luke. I don't, I'm so mad about it still. But, uh, no, I mean, as far as me talking myself into it, I, I, I like this as, honestly, if you could swap them for me, if the mainline movies that everybody thinks of as canon was the EU, and this was the EU, or this was like an Elseworlds type of story, I'd probably like it a whole fucking lot. I don't like that this is the main continuity, that everything just immediately went to shit again. And all of the original fucking, like, Rebellion heroes are fucking dead. And Lan and, uh, Jesus Christ. Leia and Han. Uh, their fucking kid sucks. Just fucking sucks. Is the worst. Hey, at least in the EU, even by your metric, they had one good kid, <laughs> so... <laughs> you missed it. You missed... Audience, you missed it, as I just kind of cocked my head in a way, like... I... You mean you mean only in the current canon does does Leia and Han's child suck? <laughs> no, Ben or um, Anakin was a poor sweet boy. Anakin didn't do anything wrong except die very early. And Jaina was, was fucking cool. awesome. Jaina was and fantastic. And Jason was also was. fucking awesome. Give me back fucking Ted Alka, man. I'm so mad about all these Ted fucking Alka. forgotten goddamn characters. I'm uh, I. This is what happens when I'm high as shit. I'm talking myself into liking this trilogy while getting very, very mad about the EU at the same exact time. <laughs> well, seven, eight, and nine should have just been the Yuuzhan Vong. That was the right direction yeah, to go. Yeah. Um, they didn't, and I'm cool with that well, like, because look, I, I didn't need all this stuff. I, I understand you were never gonna have the original cast in any like meaningful, huge capacity, but still fucking you want to bring in new characters sure everything's fine luke is still training at the school hans still got big divorced dad energy but you know leia's 
well respected and running shit and everything's great. And then yeah, the the uh, Yushan Bong and we gotta do this, you know, fucking. I don't know. I like generally these types of stories, but I like them as side stories. I don't like when this is the main continuity. I guess I don't know. Because I do, I like side stories where it's like, all right, you know the original story, this is the world that the heroes didn't save, you know? And that's kind of what the sequel trilogy feels like. It's like, yeah, they defeated right. Vader, they defeated Palpatine, but ultimately it meant fucking nothing. I think the sequel trilogy, if you wanted to tell it the way they told it, would have been better if episode seven was the fall of the New Republic. Yeah. You still have the same characters, you still, every, like, like, Finn still escapes, but the entire second half of the movie, where you're hopping from planet to planet, would instead be Finn and Rey go, go with Han to Coruscant, and you watch the fall of the Republic, and that is the end of the movie, and then in episode eight, you do the same thing that you do in episode 7, and start in episode 8. Luke's still away. Luke doesn't have to do the the hermit thing to the extent that he does in the current sequels. Because Luke genuinely went away when the New Republic was still a thing, and he felt he could, and he still had a similar failing. I, so, so my problem with the Luke thing isn't the Luke thing, it's the weak reason why the Luke thing happened. I mean... It could have been done better. Can I, uh... The flickering moment thing, I think, is a little, like... The fact that he lit the lightsaber yeah. is the this touch too yes. far for me. So you could still do the same story. See, just <sighs> Kylo Ren wakes up in the middle of the night with Luke standing over him with an unlit lightsaber. How, uh, there, it's fixed. How long, how long have we been recording? Do I have time to pitch a whole trilogy? Probably. All right, hey, look. You almost certainly look, do, because that's exactly what I'm doing here's... right now. That's exactly what I'm... Let me finish. Yeah, 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 Let me okay. finish. Let me finish pitching yeah, yeah. mine, and then you can pitch yours. So, in Last Jedi, everything goes exactly the same, um, except they... Rey goes to Luke because the New Republic fell. Leia died on the New Republic because I don't see a way around that because Leia would have been Chancellor. That's just the way it would have been. So, Leia dies in the first movie. Goes to Luke, gets the help, still same Luke down on himself story... But Luke has a reason to leave because Leia died. Um, and you do the Luke was at his worst but redemption arc. And again die because I, it's the right way to do it. Just a little bit cleaner. Um, and then the movie ends with them stopping the giant Death Star thing that they do in Force Awakens. And then the last movie. Because one of my notes for this week was I got mad about Snoke dying again. Because he's just a better villain than bringing back yes. Palpatine. And the last movie is what they did in Last Jedi that I didn't mention. And a little bit of what they did in Rise of Skywalker. And a little bit of what they did in Duel of the Fates. Which was the original script for it. To clean it up. Finish it off. Everything has stakes. Everything makes sense. It doesn't feel like nothing that happened in the sequel trilogy holds today. And then that's it. You Everything that you already did, just move the timeline around a little bit and add a lot of the political state of the universe in the first movie so that you understand that, no, the sequel, the, the original trilogy had meaning. Yeah. See? Um, now, what now, is the trilogy you're <sighs> pitching? Hold on. Hold on. Because I know, I know they'll do it in a scene that's about to come out of my mouth, so hold on. Me... Okay. Um, content warning... Chris is very, very, very high. Yeah. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Writer's room time. All right, so look. Here's... Instead of picking and choosing weird, obscure parts of the EU to use, if you want to use the original cast, Jay, you're going to hate this pitch particularly strongly, I think. Um, you don't do use on bomb. You do Legacy of the Force. You just do Legacy of the Force, but you change some stuff. I will never... Can I get this in before yeah, you... I'm yeah, going to allow yeah, you to do yeah. your pitch. But can I get this in ahead yeah. of time? I will never understand how you like that series so much because it has the exact same problems you complain about the sequel trilogy having. I do, you, you act like I, I truly love this... Uh, 
honestly, it might be my least favorite fucking Star Wars novel series. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, That's what I'm I don't know, to well, no, I don't know where, time. I, I, I don't think I defend Legacy of the Force as strongly as it seems like I do, I guess. I don't, like, it, it destroyed my favorite character in the EU. They fucking destroyed my favorite character in the EU, and then they fucking killed him off, you know? <laughs> like, I still think, I'll defend Legacy of the Force this time, though. I think that was the right thing to do with Jason. It was the right direction. Look, I, it was because it had been set up so well in the Jean Bong series. Yes, and I mean they but did it my, well at least. Like it sucked and it hurt, and I was very the, mad and I was very sad at the time. But like it was very well. Except done. for the Karen Travis books, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, th that's the biggest problem with Legacy of the Force. It was written by three different authors that's over it. nine books who didn't fucking talk to. Gee, each it's kind of weird when you multiple creators creating a series and they're not talking to each other yes that's kind of weird that'd yes, be, a, that'd be crazy if someone else fucking did that at some point with a big franchise that's why this came <laughs> up my friend that's why this came up anyway you were saying so, you wanted yeah, to so we're, fucking so we're gonna change them. some stuff to make this work for a three movie spread to condense a lot of information into well i mean fuck they kind of did that already with the scene fuck it you know you start off and you know we give a cold open and i hate what i'm about to do right now because i'm gonna pitch something that if they had actually done this i would have been very mad about <laughs> i'm gonna fridge mara j skywalker right off the bat uh you open up with the movie opens up with mara j and jason dueling you kill Mara Jade. Or maybe not. No, maybe. Please continue. No, no, I'm not going to interrupt no, maybe, you. No, we don't I'm start just, that way. I, we don't start that way. But we, I was going to say. The end of this movie going, nobody knows who Mara Jade Skywalker is in this situation. So it's just like. Dude, half these fucking people are. We got three goddamn movies with them. All right. I don't fucking know. Who's this? Okay, go, go, go. I would. No, hold on. I would be cooler introducing and killing off Mara Jade immediately. And at least assuming people would. Be like, oh, okay, Luke's wife, sure. New character, whatever, Luke's wife. Then fucking emo Darth Vader in a goddamn Hot Topic costume that we're supposed to take seriously as the main villain right off the bat. With no connection to the fucking character, you know? <laughs> I'm trying very hard not to interrupt. Yeah. So I have many things to say, but I'm trying to... Kind of following the same as what you were saying previously, we see, uh, you know, Jason Solo and... Uh, some others trying to, you know, fucking, whatever, MacGuffin, fucking plot device, the New Republic is doing something, they're on a mission, you know, it, uh, they're cleaning up the rem, you know, you can even make this technically the end of Views on Bong, you know, to set everything else up, like, or Jason gets rescued, something, we do something with that where we set up, like, clearly, alright, these are Han and Leia's kids, this one's a little damaged, this one's a little broken, we're, uh, Jay's writing. Uh, this one's, uh... I've gotta get stuff written down. This one's, you know, this one's a little fucked up. There was just a war that the New Republic had to put down, you know, I'd say, yeah. So, uh, other plot devices, this one probably be a little bit more political intrigue than anything else. And then the movie ends, you know, you're introduced throughout the movie to Mara Jade, you know, it's Luke's wife, uh, you're able to build kind of an attachment, and then Jason goes full dark side, and I am, interestingly... You just fixed a lot of things about what I was writing. I will, interestingly, say that this would also require me to pitch something that would also make me very mad if they had done this. There is no Sith Master controlling Jason. Jason just fully snaps independently, goes full dark side himself. Um, you... Oh, but Vergara is so good. <laughs> You hey, listen. You jack that power. Don't laugh at me. Up, ridiculously. You really play into the. Uh, you know, I am the. I am the. Grandson of my grandfather. You know, like I am, the I am the chosen one. You know, you have him go full fucking lunatic. He's Vulcan in Marvel. Just make him Vulcan. You know, crazy, ridiculously overpowered fucking space emperor just mowing through people. You know. Show off some crazy force powers that we don't fucking see in the movies. He can move really fast, and he can do it more than one time for three seconds. Um, 
<laughs> you know, you do this big fucking battle at the end, you know, you got everybody attacking him, and then Mara Jade dies in this. Boom. Movie ends. Last Jedi picks up. Luke's on an island, because Mara Jade just died. Luke's on an island. Same as your pitch, you get, uh, you know, you get sad Luke sitting on an island somewhere. Send, that's where, that's where you put, uh, no, you know what, I would, I, whew, I almost did the Hollywood thing, I almost did the predictable, yeah, you send Leia to the island to get him, and then they have sibling talk while Han leads the kids going to find, like, you know, what I'm thinking for The Last Jedi, in my That's version of The Last Jedi. That's a very EU story, though. Well, yeah, it's a very EU story, but it's also a very Hollywood... No, fuck that. Spin that. Han goes to the island to go talk to Luke. Leia goes with the kids and, fight and puts together <laughs> these allies. Now, Luke. <laughs> Luke, you gotta come back. I Listen, I... Leia sent me here to... Because she needs the help, and we we don't know what to do with our kid. Luke, well, but to yeah. be honest, I just need someone that has force powers because apparently I failed as a father, and I don't want him to light a lightsaber <laughs> through my body because I know I can't fight him. Mm. Luke, Luke, I'm gonna need you. To, I I know you're doing your whole Jedi thing here, you know, you know, mm, or whatever the shit that you talk about with the old green frog man. But I need you. To stop being a little bitch, Luke, and come with me I've... back and deal with these problems. I've never known Listen, how badly I need you to fight doing a Yoda impression. Before. <laughs> oh, just a thing of pure joy to imagine. Fuck, but no, I mean, look, hard, here, hard to see the dark here's side. My, uh, here's my pitch for for this movie. You get. An isolated story, and I think it would make Harrison Ford quite happy. It's a lot less shooting. He just Probably. sits on an island talking to emo Luke for a whole movie. <laughs> the whole movie? Basically the whole movie. They, they'll come back in the final act to do some stuff, but ba basically the idea okay. is we send Han, we send... I don't know. We could send someone else, I guess. Who else do we want to send? Han Solo and Kyle Katarn. Go to <laughs> this. Chris, can I offer one note? Yeah, what's up? This is an AO3 script. Yeah. You have written an AO3 script. This Han, Luke, this and is pure Kyle fan Katarn service. go to a fucking bar and just... <laughs> no, because it can't be Kyle, because Kyle plays in the other part of the story I'm pitching here. So... <laughs> fucking Christ. Chris. So it's Han this and is, one of the kids. I just need you to understand you're not writing a trilogy, you're writing fan fiction. No, listen. Just so you're aware of that. Listen, I, I think I'm going to win you over in this next bit. Hold on. So, you know, Han and Luke are on an island and they're talking. <laughs> they're having therapy. Han probably bought his, brought his smoker to the island with him from the Falcon because, you know, Han strikes me as the guy who would get really into smoking meats in his advanced age. Like, Oh my dad! <laughs> like most older white dudes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Leia. As soon as my dad had disposable <laughs> income after retirement, money came in. He's like, "I'm gonna buy a smoker." Well, you know, you get it's Han, it's Han and Chewie, it's Han and Chewie on the island with Luke, which is way funnier to me than just ah, Han and grilling Luke. porgs. Um, but you get the other group that is spending the whole movie essentially setting up a heist. Fucking whatever MacGuffin you want to make it for. A goddamn Jedi holocron, something. Fucking anything. They're heisting something from crazy Emperor Jason at this point. I'm assuming we've had a time jump of a year or two or something at least. A couple of years. Something. It would make a lot more sense than what they did. This is the one thing. It's like, <sighs> yeah. Maybe you should have had time yeah. between these yeah. movies. Um, but, so Leia... You got Jaina, Tenelka, and Lobaka. You got them looking for old allies. You get to see Lando again. Leia goes and talks to Lando at one point. Um, you know, ver various old friends. They're putting together uh, this mission where they track down old allies. And they find Kyle Katarn, who helps them with this. And yeah, that's my pitch for this movie. It's a heist. Something goes... I don't know, poorly, I'm sure. You get some stuff, you know, you're you're building Jaina Solo up. That's the goal of these movies, is you build up Jaina Solo. You're building Jaina Solo up for that climactic okay. battle 
And hey, kind of weird if you want to do a weird dyad fucking connection in the Force thing. It almost seems like that would work a lot better with twins, Disney. That would make a lot more sense, Disney. I mean, that is where they stole the dyad in the Force. Yes, plot yes. Point from. I know. I, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm mad about it. I'm so mad. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what to do for the What's... last movie. To be honest, the EU was weird about it too because it was less like a dyad in the Force until the end of the Legacy of the Force series and it was more like, oh, hey, this makes us very effective as a starfighter fucking yeah. squad. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so the final movie, all the pieces are coming together and I'm sure at the end of the end of uh, Last Jedi, my version of The Last Jedi that I've turned into a Guy Ritchie movie, essentially. Um... <laughs> Which, fucking A, I would love to watch Guy Ritchie's version of Star Wars. I'm just putting that out there. Let Guy Ritchie do a Star Wars movie. Um, Ironically, this is very Ryan Johnson, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, end of the movie, Luke comes in, you know, Han's able to get him off the island. They come back with, like, some sweet ribs or something from the smoker. I don't know. Uh, but Luke comes in, you know, Ports. this fight in the, you know, you have big Jedi fight. Fucking have... Have Jason kill Luke. I mean... Only if it's on Kashyyyk. You really want to make people sad? Have Jason kill Lobaka. You know? Get some collateral damage in there. Um, I mean, fuck it. Have Jason kill Han, too. Sure, why not? Have Jason kill fucking most people in this movie. I don't really care. Leave Leia alive. Leave Jaina alive. That's all I need. Um, because for the final movie, yeah, you just do the big climactic full burning of these empire institutions essentially new republic whatever the fuck it is at this point everything's just fucking burning we're starting basically completely fucking anew big fucking set piece battle you can have fucking mandalorians you can have fucking everything whatever the hell you want to put in here make no, this no, star no. wars can i make game. a request about this ao3 t fiction that you're making hmm. Remove Boba Fett and the Mandalorian thing from it because that was. No, the no. Biggest see, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't saying like specifically we gotta bring Boba Fett back, but like you know, on and the his side, Jedi paddle. You know, on the side, yeah. of, you know, these people going after Jason at this point, whatever the hell they're calling themselves. You know, you just have your Avengers Endgame moment where you, you're having this massive fucking climactic battle. You see Mandalorians helping out. You see like uh, the Wookies helping out. Fucking everyone. You know, just it's a big fucking true finale because that bullshit weird final battle we got in the last jedi is kind of an insult as a fucking like conclusion to this big fucking nine movie epic you know a lot of ships clustered into one tiny little airspace yeah you know but uh, no you know you, and it ends obviously this was the way the fucking legacy of the force comics end jaina has to kill jason you know and that connection is severed it's all very sad and it would still be a pretty bleak movie, but you have Jaina, you have Leia, you have some people still around, and you got you got the same type of story, but without damaging every character along the way, I think. I had a ton of points that I racked up in my head and even started to write down as you pitched it, but I have one point that I think is the most relevant of the things that were in my head. The problem with what you pitched is the problem with a lot of book movies. You're assuming an emotional connection that I don't think you're going to have time to properly apply. See, I think over three movies it's easy because that's that is the that's the thing with Han, Luke, and Leia is, I think they are strong enough characters that have such a level of nostalgia and attachment behind them that you would be able to quickly endear an audience to Luke Skywalker's wife that people know nothing about, Han and Leia's kids that people know nothing about. You see another fucking Wookiee and they're like, yeah, it's Chewbacca's nephew. People are like, fuck yeah, I'm on board, man. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, that's... Ten Alka might be a harder sell, you know. She's the the yeah. uh, the partner of the the mad evil space emperor. You know? I just feel like so much of that episode seven would have to be 
establishing a universe both past and present yeah. and establishing characters both past and present that it would be a very slow start and i still don't think it would do enough i think to be the backbone of eight and nine and you would have the same problem except worse that you have in the sequel trilogy where the modern characters kind of play a backseat to the the classic characters that that's where my brain is at because even listening to it and even knowing their stories i was like okay but if i didn't know these things ahead of time i don't know if i would have been like see that's why i think uh emotionally that's why attached. i think the first movie being mainly set up would would work though because you're able to have these moments where you're building attachments to these characters through you know you have a sentimental moment between jaina and Han the same way you did Han and Rey in Force Awakens, you know, them them right. talking there on the ship, you know, you have there's ways to build those connections and I think the connection to the legacy characters would be strong enough to make that work. I think honestly, like that might be like what you're saying, it might be one of the reasons they chose not to, but I think at least bringing characters in that have some fan base already and trying to build those emotional connections quick would be way more effective than three completely brand that. new characters that ended up being kind of I, a hard sell. I guess what it is to me is that I, I first of all, I want I want to say this because it this this episode has accidentally felt very anti Ray and Finn, and I think they're great characters. Oh yeah, we've talked I think about they are about better that. characters than. Yeah, I think they're better characters than most of the other Star Wars characters in the movies, to be honest. Um, except, I don't think Poe gets there, but I think both Rey and Finn get there. And I think Kylo gets there, too, even if I don't particularly like Kylo. I think where I'm hitting the wall here is I really don't agree that if you're going to do a movie after the original trilogy, that... And this isn't me knocking on the books that I don't particularly like. Just from a pure story beat perspective, I don't think they're the books to do. I think the reason why those books work so well for a lot of people is because you've had a decade worth of storytelling that allowed you to know those characters. Yeah. And I think if those books weren't written in the late 2000s and they were instead written in the late 90s or early 2000s, they wouldn't have worked. That nobody would have cared as much. The reason why Jaina and Jason work so well is because you had a decade of build. Because that's the other thing. The the thing that works about the the sinew that makes that those nine books work is you saw Jason fall way before that series started. Yeah. It started with the Yuzhan Vong torture and Verger, which that that's my other complaint about this. No Verger. I think Verger is important. I mean, to make make him story. the make him the first um, uh, the villain of the first movie. Like I said, have them at the in the beginning of this trilogy cleaning up the ending of the Yuzhong Vong conflict. You know, and that's like I said, movie opens yeah, up with them that... rescuing Jace from being tortured. You know, the reason why Verger works so well is because Verger was never positioned as a villain. Verger was just the inciting incident to. The the philo Verger and Kreia are the most interesting characters Star Wars have ever made to me. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't disagree because they both have very similar philosophies, and it's that philosophy that she gave to Jason that made him fall because because she couldn't live to it and neither could he, which I think makes her stronger than Kreia, but Kreia has more scenes, so it works. The reason why those books work despite terrible direction in writing i'm sorry i know i'm coming down hard on it but it's because you've had a decade of build to this moment yeah. and in the same way that i think a lot of book movies don't work even ones that totally throw out the script and try to redo it i don't know if it's enough without a little bit of that oomph personally because yeah. i can already see the million fucking video essays well, that would come out of it like why the books yeah. were better than well, that's the thing. like i can it's, see it's all never gonna be and i can see valid points and that's kind of what i said when i when i began pitching this thing initially it was like 
I know I'm going to be doing a much more condensed version of this story, and we're going to be changing some elements. But like, yeah, honestly, I still, I still, and again, I have I'm very biased because I love the EU, and as much as I don't particularly love the Legacy of the Force novels, I mean that's the ending to the character I got. As as I have gotten older, I have realized, and it's something that like. And I know what I'm about to say is going to make me sound like a hypocrite for the way I feel about how the sequel trilogy characterized Luke. I have looked... Well, no, it doesn't, because... <sighs> I guess that's not true of the books, too, though. No, yeah, I'm a fucking hypocrite. Um, I have learned... <laughs> Name of the episode right there. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's as I kind of get more of an appreciation for the art of writing or creating or what it is but and i've, I've said it before about uh, what the hell we were talking about where i said essentially like look if this is i'm never gonna knock a creator for doing something with their creation i'm never gonna tell them they're wrong for doing that <sighs> i feel like we as the uh people consuming the content where uh you, you see it a lot with, like, uh, Twitch streamers, influencers and stuff. People get, like, these really unhealthy parasocial relationships with these fucking people. I feel like we, as the consumers of media, literature, pretty much anything, can kind of do that same thing, where you build, like, an ownership almost, where you feel very strongly about a certain character or a story to the point where you get very fucking mad when something happens that you don't agree with the characterization of. I'm having a harder time doing that as I get older. Kind of from that same perspective, the same reason I'll never knock a creator doing something with their own creation. Yeah, if this is where you're telling me the story's going, this is where the story's going, you know? And that's... Even though it's not technically by the creator, it's kind of how I feel about the legacy of the Force novels. It makes me sad that that's what happens with Jason, but I mean, it's just a tragic story at that point, I guess, you know? It's like, I love this character. It makes me very sad to see what happened to this character, but I guess that's just part of the tragedy of it, you know? And again, it's a little bit different, because it's not technically the creator. It's not George Lucas who did this. Yeah, but George didn't even make Jason. Well, yes, but that's the thing. It's like, these yeah. were at, this was at least kind of still these were the people who were entrusted to carry on this story officially. And the same could be said of the sequel trilogy, I suppose. But that's also after fucking Disney bought it. And fuck Disney, alright? I don't I use to give that same blanket forgiveness of where a story is going, I guess, to Disney. Because so far, the only... And it's very funny, because I realize the thing I just pitched kind of reminds me of a thing that I've only watched a couple of episodes of, of at this point so far, the Willow series that just came out might be one of the best continuations of fucking anything ever. Just based on the little bit that I've seen and kind of some of the other stuff I've heard about it. Same thing, weirdly enough, with Cobra Kai, <laughs> the Netflix series. Because holy shit, nothing has ever been made that is such a, like, love letter to the original source material, as well as such a faithful fucking continuation. And it sucks to see that, like, Star Wars is truly one of the biggest franchises of anything ever fucking created. I don't know if there's fucking statistics on that kind of stuff, but I would feel they're putting them in that top five list at the very least. So I don't know. It's I have revealed on this episode that uh, I am a hypocrite. I guess is my I rest my case, Your Honor. I am a hey. hypocrite. <laughs> all of this very we weak all are, and I'm ranting and uh, soliloquizing for fucking. I'm a hypocrite. That's the end of this. I'm just a fucking hypocrite. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I I get it. I I really do. It's hard to um, detach what you see as good from the comparisons to what can be seen as bad. 
because there's you there are very often similarities even when something is good and bad to a way something was approached um i do want to circle back to one thing you said which is you've said this quite a few times um that you're more willing to forgive a creator yeah. doing something you don't agree with with their own creation than you are someone else yes. um doing uh something with something someone else created that you don't agree with um and i don't agree with that because i personally think trademark laws are bullshit and all trademarks should be burned to the ground and everybody should be able to do whatever the fuck it's they not, want with whatever the fuck it's they not want. even a uh trademark thing though i mean like because i'm not talking about like you know i don't think we should do a seance and ask uh you know fucking uh what the hell's his name uh arthur conan doyle i don't think we should do a fucking seance and ask him what he thinks we should do with sherlock it's not what i'm saying i'm saying like if it's a creator who's still actively working on the main story of their thing that they created you know like I'm forgiving of that, you know? That's not to say that I would begrudge or take offense to anyone else making something of that, because at that point, it's someone else doing it, you know, fair use, whatever, take trademark laws out of it. I don't have to consume that content. That's not considered the mainline, official, direct content of that thing, you know? I, I don't know. I just really think, personally, that I enjoy anarchy go see uh winnie the pooh blood and honey in theaters right God. now uh you can buy a ticket i'm pretty sure six weeks in the future this has been star wars every week forever what a strong send off <laughs> i had an off ramp i had a fucking off ramp and i was going with it even though you blew my spot we love you all <laughs> good night He's getting good reviews. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed us, thought we were funny, like our content, or just really love our suffering and want to hear more of it, we're available all over the place and release episodes every Wednesday around 12 Eastern Standard Time. You can find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Player FM, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and in a unique format over on YouTube that our fans seem to dig. You can join in on the conversation over on Twitter as well, at SWEWF. We're quite active and love to hear from our fans. Sincerely, though, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend with us on this car crash of a ride.